I used to watch a lot of boxing. And you can tell a boxer went downhill once he, a lot of times when he got real rich. I think Rocky made a movie about it. You know, once you start making money, it's hard to get out there and train 10, 15 hours a day. If you don't train 10, 15 hours a day and you're fighting champions from all over the world, you're going to get beat. So, and, uh, but, you know, we already are in some pretty crazy times. And we're getting ready to face, according to the Bible, some pretty rough times. That's right. Um, so, you know, I kind of want people to be ready. I want my church to be ready. I want to be ready mentally. Mm -hmm. And uh, the best way to be ready mentally is to be in that word, to be in that Bible. Amen. Give yourself a church. Keep praying. That's right. Uh, there's a lot of stuff you can do. And the Bible warns us over and over and over and over that you be careful about the deception in the last day. There's going to be a whole lot of it. I can be deceived. Gary can be deceived. Rylan, my amen corner over here can be deceived. Where's Hunter at? He's supposed to be a part of it. Don't be here, man. Um, and uh, how do we keep from being deceived? Well, one thing is to keep your nose in the Bible. That's right. And remember, the raw Bible. Uh, study Bibles, they were made by man. Their commentary, they might can help you. I use them. But you got to be careful, though. That they're biased and they're full of opinions. And a lot of them are, are paid off to teach certain things. And, uh, uh, you know, in churches, I know everybody looks up to certain preachers and Bible teachers and, and TV guys and radio guys, but I'm warning you, they are a man. They are fallible just like you are. Uh, you have a Bible yourself. You need to look up. You need to study yourself. You do not take nobody's word on anything. I've had to relearn the Bible. I've had to reset my mind many a times. Since I've had this church, since I've had to change my mind on a lot of things. you got to stay in it constantly. And the Bible teaches that teachers are going to be held more accountable uh, when we're on judgment, just a regular Job. So I need to be, when I teach this something, I need to be make sure it's right. I need to try the scriptures. One way you do that, like if you want, for example, want to study wine in the Bible. It talks about Jesus turned the water to wine. Some people say it's grape juice. Some of them tells you it's liquor. Well, well, which one is it? Well, you got to study for yourself. You find everything in the Bible has to say about wine. Uh, if you have to look up Greek or whatever, you don't think you always need to. You can look it up. Guess what? You know, you come up with your conclusions that way. This is how you definitely don't want to go to your conclusions. What do you think about wine? Well, this is what I think. My papa said. My preacher said. No, you're going to end up on a path that you don't need to be on. You need to study for yourself. Amen. You need to be in the Bible for yourself. Right. There's a lot of good men out there. There's a lot of good Bible teachers. One of my favorite Bible teachers, he don't get everything right. He gets a lot of things wrong, but he's helped me a lot. He told me, he said, man, he said, no, I, boy, I study the Bible, less people listen to me. He said they would always put a gray hair over me when I was young. I thought once my hair got gray, maybe they'll listen to me. And say, guess what? They still didn't listen to me. So I was full of Bible knowledge, Bible wisdom. Had uh, uh, Bibles published all over the world. And uh, people still wouldn't listen to me. So he's like, it's just part of it. But we got to study for ourselves. And tonight, my topic is going to be the abomination of desolation. And I'm going to try to not make it above everybody's head. But I'll tell you why this is so important. Jesus said before he comes back. Now, if he comes back and then that happens, guess what? Uh, the Bible is incorrect, and I don't believe the Bible is incorrect. Do you, anybody here believe the Bible is incorrect? Uh -huh. Matthew said abomination and desolation has to happen before he comes back. Mark says abomination and desolation has to come back, has to happen before he comes back. Luke says the abomination, I think, or, or the desolation, at least one of the words out, has to happen before Jesus comes back. And then Paul says it has to happen. John says it has to happen. Daniel says it has to happen. So guess what? It's got to happen before Jesus comes back. So we need to know what it is. A lot of times uh, you mention abomination, desolation, and people has been in church 100 years. And they're like, what's that? I never heard of that. Oh, it's just mentioned like eight times in the Bible or something has to happen before uh, Jesus comes back. Oh, oh. And, and you talk about God and made God. That's a big thing on Facebook now. I'll talk about that a little bit. And people was like, what in the world is God can make God? And one time I was preaching, and I was right in the middle of it. You know, I was, I was getting hot and heavy. And I said, and God can make God's at the end of a thousand-year reign, not uh, uh, at the by the Armageddon or something. I can't remember. But, what? What are you talking about? God can make God. It's like, well, and, and so anyway, we'll get into that a little bit tonight, too. All right. We'll start this off with Matthew 24. Remember I told you anytime you see red letters up here? That's Jesus speaking. 
And uh, uh, many false prophets shall rise and deceive many. How many false prophets? A few, one or two? Many. Many. They're going to uh, deceive just a few little people here and there. So how many are going to see? Many. That's why we got to keep our nose in the Bible. And I, and I, I suggest getting the right Bible too. If your Bible says uh, if you rape a woman, you have to marry her, throw it away. It's not a Bible. Okay. If your Bible says you need a, a, the mark of beast is going to be on your hand instead of in your hand, you might want to be careful on that thing. Uh, you might want to get a Bible. That, that has a lot to do with it too, you know. And uh, because iniquity shall abound, the love of many shall wax cold. I mean, that's getting here, ain't it? My mom was talking today, but you get people come working on your house and, and they'll tear it all to pieces and leave it, charge your arm and leg, won't come back fix nothing. And that just seems like it's everywhere. Everybody you talk to, uh, people just, they don't look after each other like they used to. Friends will turn on you in a heartbeat. World's gone cold. Family's gone cold. And it's just like the Bible says, it's going to happen before Jesus comes back. It's here. That, that policy is going to be fulfilled. That's right. But he that endure to the end, the same shall be saved. What about if you what if you drop out before the end happens? You know? Uh, and this gospel of the kingdom shall be preached in all the world for witness to all nations, and then shall the end come. Now, now the gospel's been preached to the whole world. Now, it's, uh, every culture and every tribe has pretty much been covered with the gospel now. It wasn't that way a couple of years ago. Uh, Vietnam veterans said, you know, uh, people in Vietnam never even heard of Jesus. They've heard of Jesus now. The, 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 the tribes out here in some island somewhere in Brazil or something in the rainforest, they've heard of Jesus now. And uh, so that stuff has happened. That prophecy has happened. So we're getting closer and closer, guys. But here's some the, 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 the bad part of it. When you therefore shall see the abomination of desolation spoken of by Daniel the prophet stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. You know what that means? Read Daniel. Try to figure out what uh, Jesus is talking about when he says abomination and desolation. Okay? Then let them which be in Judea flee into the mountains. Let him which is on the housetop not come down take anything out of his house. Neither let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. So Jerusalem, as you see it right now, Jesus said it's going to be desolate till he comes back. It's desolate right now. They have the big pride parades. They got uh, uh, hardly a church in it. One, if there's Christians anywhere, most of them are Catholic, you know, and, and, and uh, there's very few of them. And it's just a wicked, awful place, just like Jesus said it would be. They hate Jesus up there. They'll disown their kids if they turn into Christians. It's wicked. If you look into it, it's wicked just like the Bible said. The Bible calls it Sodom, Egypt in the last day. It's what it calls it in Revelation. And, uh, but it says those, uh, when you see the abomination, Jesus, Jesus gives my fire warning. He said, get out of Jerusalem. Get out of Judea. Judea is like the southern part of Israel. Flee into the mountains. They, at, right, right now it's Palestine. Flee into the mountains. Uh, uh, okay, let him which is on the high top not cannot take anything out of his house, and let him which is in the field return back to take his clothes. And woe to them that are with child, and to them that give suck in the last days. For pray your flight be not in the winter, there on the Sabbath day. I dropped down a few verses, I believe. For then shall be great tribulation. Such was not since the beginning of the world to this time nor shall ever be. So in the history of the planet, World War II, World War I, Alexander the Great, Napoleon, whatever, whatever tragedy, whatever, the, the great plague uh, uh, that happened, you know, the bubonic plague and all that, all these great tribulations and tragedies that happened in the world, the worst one is going to happen before Jesus comes back. And you can't say it already happened uh, the hundreds of years ago. No, it's going to happen right before he comes back, after the abomination desolation. Not before it, after. So guess what, guys? And Jesus had come back yet in verse 21. We're going to have to go through a tribulation. One of the most, most unbiblical teachings that's ever been in the, in, in the history of the church is that we're going to be out of here before the tribulation happens. The Left Behind movies. Yep. You know, you had Kirk Cameron on. I like Kirk Cameron. Mm -hmm. He quit playing in the movies. You know why? Because he started studying the Bible for himself. And I'm whoa, I, I'm, I'm pushing false doctrine. Mm -hmm. So then he got Nicholas Cage. You know, that great evangelist, preacher, pastor, Christian Nicholas Cage. You know, and then he got him. Oh, he'll do it. You know, give him a couple million dollars. He'll push that agenda, you know. Okay. Anyway. But anyway, I went back back up verse 15. So when you therefore shall see the abomination, desolation, 
spoken of by the Daniel prophet, stand in the holy place. Whoso readeth, let him understand. I know there's popular teaching that there has to be a third temple and Antichrist is going to do abomination, desolation of the third temple. Could be, might be, does not say it has to be. It says it in a holy place. Uh, it could be a church. Uh, they got a big church, a giant church right where Jesus was crucified and where he resurrected all in the same building. It could be something like that. It don't specify. It doesn't say a third temple. That's that's guesses. That's commentary. That's that's something that could be, but don't have to be. But all it has to be, it has to be some kind of place, some kind of temple, some kind of holy place, some kind of religious place. And a, the, what we call the Antichrist, the Bible calls him son of perdition, the man of sin. Uh, there's an Antichrist spirit. Uh, the Bible don't call him Antichrist. It talks about him a lot. But uh, 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 you, you know what I'm talking about. We call it Antichrist. The Bible don't say Bible either, but we call it the Bible. The Bible don't say rapture anywhere, but we, we, we use the word rapture for the calling of the saints. Anyway, whoso read it, let him understand. So we're going to read it. We're going to read it. And, and, and let me tell you, Daniel is not as easy to understand as Revelation is. Uh, a lot of people like to take a little bit confusing scriptures, and they like to build false doctrine on it, you know, so you always got to be aware of that. But anyway, Jesus said to read it and understand it. So we're going to read it tonight. We're going to try to make some sense of it. An arm shall stand on his part. Just real quick, that's an army. You know, they're going to hit his soldiers. It's going to stand for what we call the Antichrist. It's okay if I call him Antichrist because I don't want to have to give him 15 names. I already just call him Antichrist for sure. The Antichrist shall stand on his part, and they shall pollute the sanctuary strip. And they shall take away the daily sacrifice, and they shall place the abomination that maketh desolate. So that's the abomination desolation Jesus was talking about. And such as do wickedly against the covenant shall he corrupt by flatteries. So people, it's not Christian or whatever. He's going to flatter them, and he's going to seduce them, and he's going to get them to follow him, okay? But the people that do know their God shall be strong, and shall do exploits. And I don't know about you, if I'm going to have to face the worst time in the history of the planet, I want to be strong. Amen. I want to be able to do exploits. We believe in the power of God here. The Bible said last day, people's going to have form of godliness and deny the power of. We're not going to deny the power here. Uh, we believe God can do anything. We believe God can raise the dead, heal the sick, cast out uh, devils, uh, 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 heal the blind, heal the deaf, and everything. And I tell you, by faith, we named our church faith for him, so we put on the spot, uh, put us on the spot. And I tell you, people fight faith today. It ain't easy to have faith today. A lot of the ministers, the popular ministers in the world, they don't have faith. They teach against faith. Uh, people right here teach against faith. Uh, they fight us on everything uh, that we try to believe in. The Bible tells us, uh, tell them, we can, if we need to tell that mountain, jump in the ocean, tell it, and they go. And people's like, oh, it don't mean what it says. And Jesus said, you know, this signs shall follow them that believe. And people will tell you, no, it don't mean what it says. And, and it says the last days, sons and daughters prophesy. And people tell you, no, that don't mean what it says. I'm getting tired of people telling me the Bible don't mean what it says. The Bible means exactly what it says. Amen. It's not confusing if you believe what it says. If you believe every turkey bird that talks out here, uh, you're going to be so confused. You don't even know if you're coming and going. But if you keep your nose in the Word uh, all the time like you're supposed to anyway, you're not going to fall for all these false prophets. You're not going to fall for all these deceptions out here. You're going to be like the boxers I was talking about. You're going to be ready for what's coming. You're going to be doing exploits. You're not going to be getting your brains beat out. That's why I preach this morning. We don't need to be in sin when the tribulation comes. It's going to be hard enough for us being holy. Uh, it's going to be hard enough us, us being ready and mentally, mentally ready for what's coming. But uh, it's going to be real hard for those that think Jesus is going to get, out of, get us out of here first. It's going to be real hard for those who say there is no Antichrist coming. Uh, for those who say nothing has to happen before Jesus comes back. I don't know what Bible they're reading. Oh, yes, I do. They're not. They're not reading the Bible. They're going by papaws. They're going by preachers that, 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 that's got them confused to death. I'm telling you, I'm an enemy to false doctrine today. Uh, that's my enemy. Uh, it's deception. My enemy is deceit. And uh, I'm not going to be the most popular guy around here because that's who I face. That's who I fight. 
And I don't apologize for it. That's why people can't get nowhere in life. That's why people can't get more in their walk with God. That's why nobody can get close to God. Because there's all this deception out here. Because people's not studying the Bible, looking up things for themselves. They're trusting all these turkey birds. They're trusting all these people out here. You don't know who you're to. You don't know what these people are behind the scenes. A lot of people are paid to teach stuff. I, I tell you, I don't make money preaching the gospel. I pay money to preach the gospel. But you got people out here making millions and millions of dollars to teach you certain things. Where are they getting that money at? Where's that money come from? Why are they making that much money? Paul Apostle, he bought 12 houses with the money that he got. No, he, most of the time he worked to build tents uh, uh, wherever he was at preaching and teaching. Uh, did, did Peter go out and get him a big chariot with, with uh, 30 horses to pull him around big shot? No, he didn't worry about that stuff. He didn't have time for all that mess. He only had time to get people saved and getting people to gospel. All the disciples, they didn't, they didn't get caught up in the things of this world like the ministers do today. Man, they'd sell their family out for money today. And people follow everything they say. Ooh, ah, ooh, ah. Okay, I'm going to read 32 again. As such as do wickedly against the covet, he shall corrupt by flatteries. <clears throat> but the people that know their God shall be strong Amen. and do exploits. Boy, I hunger for exploits. Mm -hmm. I want to see the nine gifts of spirits in here real bad. Mm -hmm. Real bad. And then Daniel 11 will keep going. And the king shall do according to his will. And see, he shall exalt himself and magnify himself above every God. And shall speak marvelous things against the God of gods. And shall prosper till the indignation be accomplished. For that is the termination. Termination shall be done. Neither shall he regard the, regard the God of his fathers, nor desire women, nor regard any God. For he shall magnify himself above all. The Antichrist is coming, and he's going to claim to be God in a holy place. As Daniel's making that clear. Daniel's making that clear. That's something that, that has to happen before Jesus comes back. Not real hard to understand unless you're listening to Homemade Hill's uh, doctrine pushers around here. It's not real hard to understand unless you listen to a bunch of paid off turkey birds. It says there's got to be a abomination, a desolation happen for Jesus come back. He's going to be in a holy place and he's going to claim to be above everything. He's going to claim to be God. And people are going to follow him. Hook, line, and sinker. The world is ripe and ready to follow a man like that. The churches are dying. The churches are getting weak. The churches, uh, uh, they're in bad shape. Or they're, they're on their last leg. They're, 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 they're weak today. And, and I don't apologize for saying that because this is the truth. They are. They get weaker. They get weaker by the day. The churches today are not strong like they was 90 -something, uh, in, uh, 20 something years ago, 50 years ago. Years ago, a hundred years ago, and I'm watching them get weaker and weaker and weaker and weaker, and and we have not seen no power happen in church much. They have a good cry every now and then, a good chill bump, but they've not seen the power of God happen much. But then they're going to see Obama. That uh, says Antichrist is going to have a false prophet and do great signs and wonder even make fire fall from heaven. Everybody's going to say, "Huh? I'm not seeing much here, but I'm seeing something here. Wow." They said, if, if possible, even the very elect shall be deceived. So I tell you, a lot of people, it's going to be deceived by the Antichrist. Let's not let it be none of us, please. I hope nobody will fall for that stuff uh, after sitting through teachings like this. I hope God sent everybody here under my voice tonight so you all won't be followed to deception. You all won't be deceived. But his estate shall be under the God of forces. What's God of forces? I, I, I ain't going to answer that one. And the God whom his fathers knew not shall he honor with gold and silver, precious stone, and pleasant things. Then we jump up to Paul. What's a Paul apostle? The one who wrote 13 books of the New Testament say about all this. He wrote the Thessalonians. Thessalonians is going around like he's a, a homemade hills places around here. And they're saying, oh, Jesus, come back any time. Jesus come back any time like them radio preachers that, that, man, they make a lot of money. They ain't going to change what they teach, guys. They're not going to teach the truth because there's too much dough coming in. You look up some of these guys, and they're worth like multi-millions and millions of dollars preaching the gospel. My man, you know, if you took some money and invested, bought stocks or something, I can understand. But just you just get, you write yourself a salary, I'm going to pay myself a million a year. You just sign the paper. Man, to preach the gospel? And I know they ain't studying no more than we are, but yet they're making a million dollars a year. And Jesus said, last day, ear ticklers. There are going to be old people love to have their ears tickled. All right, now we beseech you, brethren, 
by the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ and by our gathering together unto him, that you be not so shaken in mind or be troubled, neither by spirit, nor by word, nor by letters from us, as the day is in Christ's hands. He's telling you, don't worry. Jesus is not coming back yet. And then he gives them a reason why he's not coming back yet. Let no man deceive you. What's that say? Let no man deceive you. There's the D word again. That seems like every Sunday, Sunday morning, Sunday night, that word pops up. Don't let no man deceive you by any means. For that day shall not come except to be a fallen away first. Check. And then that man of sin be revealed. The son of perdition. Does it say Sin be revealed? No, it says that man of sin. Does that say the people of perdition? No, it says the son of perdition. There's coming a leader on the scene. We don't know who it is. I'm, gonna make, I'm not going to make any predictions. I don't know. I just know one world order is being worked on. I know uh, some of the richest men in the world said there's going to be a great reset. I know there's guys named Klaus guy named Klaus uh, Schwab. He, uh, he, he got Hitler's money when, when Hitler got done away with. Uh, and I believe his mom was a Rothschild. Either way, he's over the Bilderberg. He's over the World Economic Forum. And he talks like Dracula. They said they're going to be able to great reset. Things will never be the same. He said in 2025, everybody's going to have a microchip to buy or sell. He said people's going to own nothing and be happy. And guess what? He's been seen. Who's, who's at his meetings? Who's at his conferences? Donald Trump, Putin, uh, uh, uh uh, the Trudeau, about every leader you see in the world is with that man somewhere or another. The new world order is here. And we better be ready. It might be somebody we like. It might be somebody on our side. The devil's done got that side. It might be somebody on our side. I tell you, I've, I've, I've got my uh, radar for anybody. I'm looking for anybody to be anytime. I, I tell you, the world is right. And I'm telling you, you got to be careful. He's going to be popular. He's going to be loved. The Bible makes that very clear. That's why it tells us, warns us so many times. When you see an abomination of desolation happen, beware. Uh, let no man deceive you for any means. That they shall not come, said to be a father first. And that man, a sin, be revealed some perdition. Who oppose and exalt himself above all that's called God or that is worship. So that he... He, he, as God, sitteth in the temple of God, showing himself that he is God. That's Antichrist, folks. That's clear, crystal clear Bible. Jesus said it. Daniel said it. Paul said it. Now let's get to what Revelation has to say. It. And they worshiped the dragon which gave power to the beast. And they worshiped the beast saying, who is like it to the beast? Who is able to make war of him? And there's given him a mouth speaking great things and blasphemies. And power was given unto him to continue 40 and 2 months. And he opened his mouth in blasphemy against God to blaspheme his name and his tabernacle and them that dwell in heaven. Daniel said it. Jesus said it. Paul said it. It's going to happen, guys. Oh, man, Hill's doctrine said, we're not going to happen. We're not going to hunt our cross. I think nothing needs to happen before Jesus comes. Man, that stuff drives me nuts. Open your Bible or keep your mouth shut. Uh, trust in the word of God over man or start keeping your mouth shut. I'm praying that those who are not sincere will get out of the ministry. I'm praying for those who are teaching false doctrine will be exposed and be done away with. Because we ain't got time for that junk in the last day. It says there's going to be a falling away, so I can't really stop it. But I want to warn people. I want to warn my friends and my family. Don't fall into this stuff. Read the Bible like it says. Believe it like it says. Okay? And it was given to him make war with the saints. And to overcome them. And power is given him over all kindreds and tongues. And nations, all tongues, all kindreds, and nations. He's gonna be a pretty powerful guy, ain't he? Now, I was talking about the Klaus Schwab guy. Um, most of the leaders in the world went to his school. He has a school. You know, the guy has a patch on his eyes talking about the Keystone Pipeline. He's a Republican, whatever. He went to that guy's school. He's part of it too. So you can't trust nobody. I, I told you this morning about abortion. Oh, how to get rid of it is to vote Republican. Uh, a quarter of pregnancies in the world 2022 has been aborted, okay? A quarter. We proved that this morning. A quarter. You go to the world on major and say a quarter. One in four pregnancies ends in abortion. 
Bible, the Bible say before a horseman, the white horse is going to come and, and he's given the power of the sword to kill a quarter of the population. There you go. Uh, and we got saying, you guys you heard this. What you guys saying here? When Jesus come back, it came just like the Bible said, just like it, but not like people thought. When it's come, things are going to happen this time. It's going to happen just like the Bible says, but not not be how we think, you know. And um, and there's going to mass me great things and blasphemy. Prior to okay, that's that. Okay, and it's giving him make war with the saints, not the Jews, the saints. Okay, the saints, Christian people, and to overcome them. And Paris give him a wild can of tongues and nations. Okay, so he's going to make war on the saints, and he's going to whoop us. I mean, you talked earlier today. A lot of people are here, and oh, Jesus, come back anytime. La da da da. Let's go run through the field, you know, hug a tree, and light a candle. Um, what do you think their mind's going to be at when this stuff starts happening? They're going to be standing there going, Jesus, where you at? Jesus, where you at? Get us out of Jesus. Ah! They're not going to be ready mentally. Their kids ain't going to be ready mentally. Their family's not going to be ready mentally. What's going to happen? You ain't ready mentally and this happens. Just like I talked about the boxers. When they're not trained, they get in the ring with the champion, they get whooped. That's what's going to happen to all of them. They're going to get whooped. And that's why Jesus told us many times, endure to the end. Endure to the end. I say, I'll be saved. Why don't you jump off ship before the end comes? You know? Okay. And I'll... That dwell upon the earth shall worship him, whose names are not written in the book of life slain from the foundation of the world. If any man have an ear, let him hear. He that leadeth into captivity, captivity shall go to captivity. He that killeth with the sword must be killed with the sword. Here is the patience and the faith of the saints. Daniel said for that same thing. You know, we're going to be killed and arrested. There ain't nothing we can really do about it. You can go fight them, but you're going to be killed too. Uh, you, and, and you might be looking ready for some jail. He might be in jail. You might be going back. It's time for a good reason. All right. Revelation, and, and, and move on down to verse 15. And he had power to give life to the image of the beast. And the image of the beast shall both speak and cause that as many as would not worship the image of the beast should be killed. And he caused all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark on the right hand. Oh, that's not what it said. In the right hand. Hmm. Or on their foreheads. It also says in their foreheads um, in chapter 14. In and on is two different meanings. I am on this bench, okay? I'm not going to get in the bench, but <laughs> that was not a good metaphor. I didn't think that one out first. But I'm on this bench, okay? This styrofoam inside, that's in. Uh, this is on, this remote control is on top of the pulpit. This remote control is in the pulpit. It's a big difference in on and in, so you might want to pay attention to that. You know what I mean? Uh, and yeah, you wonder why, would, you know, just a little bit of messing with stuff can cause so much trouble in the body of Christ. Okay? And uh, in their foreheads, and why that Klaus Schwab said, I'm not saying he's an antichrist, I think he's too goofy, you don't think nobody would follow him. <laughs> he said, 2025, and I'm not, man, I'm not even saying it's coming soon, but I believe it is, that Everybody will have a won't be able to buy or sell unless they have a microchip in their hand or in their foreheads. Elon Musk has already got companies where they're microchipping chipping monkeys in their head and all that. And I'm not saying microchips are market beast, but my goodness, if I had the better thing I own, I'd bet on the thing I own, I'd let it be in. But I'm not saying it is. We won't know until it gets here. We got my everything's getting smaller, everything's getting microchipped. Dogs have been microchipped for a long time. Even people have been microchipped for a long time. Uh, I went to church. Some people that had microchips in them for the diabetes stuff. You know, people got. I don't. That's not the market base. I don't believe that's their diabetes, but it's microchip. They got them. The Technology is here. One world government's here. Technology is here. There's about to be a crash. That's what they're dying for. Everything you see watching on the news. Don't get caught up in everything. Uh, be careful. Get caught up in the Bible. Not everything you watching on the news uh, because. Hey, it's all uh, trying to crash everything. Why do they want to crash everything? Why is inflation went up like forty percent or something this year, like a year or two? Why why is the dollar dropping like a like a, a you threw a freight train off the Empire State Building? Because they want to crash everything. Why? Because they want a re great reset. That's what they say. They're not lying about it. They're admitting it. They're out and open about it. There's gonna be a great reset. We want a digital worldwide currency. No more fighting over the, uh, the dollar, uh, oil dollar, and gold standards and all this. No, we're going to have a gold currency. Remember this corona started? Bill Gates made a, 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 it wasn't a microchip. He made sure it wasn't a microchip, but it was patent 060606, and it was a digital currency. 
And the value of it wasn't gold standard or oil, nothing like that. The value of it was your labor. The more you work, the more value you had on your currency, which is actually pretty smart. If it went for the Bible, I thought, oh, that's a good idea. But since there's a Bible and I've read it so many times, I'm like, that's a horrible idea, especially 666. Man, the, 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 but they're all in it together, guys. They hate Jesus. They, they hate us. They've all said they want to kill all of us. They say, I'll say they want to get population out to 500 million. There's 8 billion. That's a lot of people they want to kill off. Okay. Uh, and no man by himself say he that mark and name the beast or number of his name. Here's wisdom. Let he, him that have understanding count the number of the beast. For it is the number of a man. His number is 600, three score, and six. Okay, I'm almost done. I'll try to hurry. I know I've got everybody spoiled. We used to time ourselves 30 minutes. So uh, I, we quit doing that because we kind of got, I can tell when 30 minutes is up because I feel it. Uh, when we a thousand years expired, uh oh, now we're getting another thing that's going to get me in trouble right here, which I don't care because I'm going with Bible, not Homemade Hills Doctrine. I've told you all that. When a thousand years are expired, Satan shall be loosed out of prison. Revelation 20. In six verses, six times, said it's going to be a thousand-year reign, okay? I, mean, I don't know how many times they, they need to tell us to make it clear. And it shall go out to see the nations where four quarters of earth, Gog and Magog, and gather together to battle a number of who is the sand of the sea. Gog and Magog is at the end of um, the thousand-year reign. I'll explain why. In Ezekiel 38, 39, it talks about Ethiopia, Libya, and Persia. No offense, guys, but their army's not that tough. I'm sorry. Uh, Ethiopia is the poorest nation in the world. And it says they're going to come attack the unwalled cities of Israel. There's no unwalled cities of Israel, man. They've got uh, their cities are covered with with big tanks and and walls and men on top of guns. Uh, they're walled with United States air bases all around it. Uh, Ethiopia is not going to get past the United States to attack Jerusalem. So he's talking about God and Magog. Then it says they're selling lions in the street in Israel. They're not selling lions in the street, as far as I know. Uh, but a thousand year reign, it said the wolf will lie with the lamb. A thousand year reign, it says the tigers will be grazing grass. It said kids will be able to play with snakes and everything. It'll be like it was in the Garden of Eden. And, and, and so during a thousand year reign, we'll be buying lions for pets. You know, we kind of cool in a way. They won't be biting our legs off. And, we, and uh, but and then uh, Satan's loose, like the Bible says right here. He's loosed out. He makes war, comes and attacks. Uh, uh, Jesus is really raining out of, of the Jerusalem. J the Satan wastes his time. Everybody gets killed. That's Gog and Magog. And they try to mix it, make it. Uh, and then it says Ezekiel 39 that they burned the weapons for seven years and, and turned the plows, uh, the weapons into plowshares. Okay, the tribulation's coming. They're supposed to mix that and the tribulation together. How are you going to burn your weapons and have all this peace and nobody ever attack you again? And then the tribulation happens. So that's why I'm saying God can make God goes at the end thousand year reign. John put it there to let us know where it's going to come. We're reading Ezekiel 38, 9, 38, 39. Going, when is that going to happen? How's that going to happen? John said at the end of the thousand year reign. So, okay. So, uh, and they went to the breath of the earth and could pass the camp the saints about. And the blood said, the fire came down from God heaven about them. Don't attack God, baby. You're wasting your time. And the devil that deceived them was cast in the lake of fire and brimstone, where the who, the beast, and the false prophet are. The Antichrist. You call him the beast, some beast for some tradition, whatever. We call him the Antichrist tonight. He's going to be in hell waiting on Satan. When Satan's fought, he's loosed, and then he's thrown in the lake of fire, where the false prophet and the beast is. They shall be tormented day and night. Forever and ever. Now, I'm, I'm not kidding. This is my last two verses, and I'll be real quick. So ye in like manner, when you shall see these things come to pass, know that it is nigh, even at the door. Verily, verily, I say to you that this generation shall not pass until all these things be done. Jesus is not coming back until what I read you happens first. If he comes back now, guess what? Throw your Bible away because it's full of lies. And I don't believe the Bible is full of lies. I give my life to it. I give that's the only thing I trust. I don't th trust man. I don't trust news. The only thing I trust is the Bible. Amen. And it says these things are going to happen before Jesus comes back. I'm not going to argue with Jesus. You can if you want to. Uh, Jesus, to me, is God. I worship him. Homemade Hills doctrine teachers, they're not. They're not God. Uh, 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 they're not above the Bible. They don't override the Bible. I'm not going to listen to them. I don't want nothing they have to. I don't want to care about nothing they have to say. If they say there's no Antichrist, they have no business teaching the Bible. Period. And I don't apologize for saying that. You have no business teaching the Bible. And I know the ones I hear teaching that. I know where they get that from because they've told me. Well, 
His papa said, who cares what his papa said? His papa wasn't Jesus. The Bible says there's going to be an antichrist come before Jesus comes back. So we all better be ready. I like what Daniel says, though. Those that are strong will do exports. I want to do exports when all that comes. Amen. I look forward to it. I like that stuff, you know. Uh, verily I say to you that this generation shall not pass. All these things be done. On the very last one. I, I try to give you a solution. I teach you the problems, and I try to give my last verse be a solution to all this. I don't know if it helps or not, but I try. Watch ye therefore, for you know not when the master of the house cometh. Now, he just told you the same chapter earlier. When you see all these things happen, you know he's nigh, but you don't know exactly when he's coming. He talks about the thief of the night, but says it's not a thief of the night for you already. Okay, so don't get those mixed up. You got to you read out the whole chapter. Got to read it all, not just one verse. Well, you know not when the master has come in even or midnight or cock crowed or in the morning. So you know pretty much when he's coming, but you don't know the exact time he's coming. Lest suddenly he find you sleeping. And what I say to you, I say to you all, this is the solution. Watch. That's my message tonight. Amen. Don't forget church Wednesday. We have food at 6.30 to 7.30.